In the previous video, I went over the few ways you can get started with an operations dashboard. In this video, I'd like to go over how to configure elements and prepare your dashboard to be shared with a wider audience. So let's get started. A dashboard is composed of one or more elements that is, are designed to always occupy 100% of your browser window. As you can see, I already have one element that's been added to my dashboard, a map element. After you add an element to a dashboard, you can hover over the upper left corner of the element to display the menu. You can access all of the element settings through this menu. Let's start by adding a second element, a header panel. This is a reserved area along the top of the dashboard that can be used for giving uh, it a unique identity or apply corporate branding. So I'm going to add my title, check out fundraising initiative in Toronto. There's a few things that I can do to customize it, like add an icon, change the color, the size, and I can even add uh, images. Uh, say you have a corporate logo, this is where you can add it. I'll select done. And there you have it at the top, and as I mentioned, that menu in the top upper hand corner. Next, I'll add an indicator. This is essentially a card that can be used to show the numeric attribute of an individual feature. When you add an element, you'll first be prompted to choose which feature it'll be based upon. This is an easy choice in my case because there's only one layer in my map. The indicator in my case will be used to display how many grocery stores participated in a fundraising event in the city of Toronto. I'll go ahead and change the background color to match my header. And there you have it. The next thing I'll add is a list. This is used to show features or rows from a layer. In this case, it'll show the list of the 24 grocery stores that participated in the fundraising event. The list um, on its own will be informative. However, I'd like users to be able to interact with the elements and the map. So this is where actions will become important. Actions are initiated by events like map extent change, a selection change, or a URL parameter change. In this case, I'm going to configure that when an item in the list is selected, the map element will zoom to the specific location. So let's configure it and see it in action. When I select an element in the list, it'll zoom to that location in the map. Now things are getting kind of crowded in here. What I can do is drag and drop the item to the desired location. So I'll start by dragging and dropping this list and docking it on the left hand side, right hand side, pardon me. And then I'll also position that indicator that's looking much better. So the next thing I'd like to do is add a serial chart. And this is what I'll use to visualize how much money was raised at each grocery store on a monthly basis. So it's important to get to know your data before configuring your dashboard. That way you're familiar with what you'd like to display and how you'd like to display it. So I'm already, I already know that I'll be displaying based off of fields for each month. So I'll select fields and I'll add each category. And 
And there we have it. We'll show the preview. I have all my months. I can configure it a little more by providing titles. I can also change the color of my charts. I could also change the kind of chart. In this case, I I think, oh, wrong one. Uh, in this case, I have chosen a bar graph. However, I could select a line or a smooth line graph if that were, if that were more appropriate. So there you have it. I have my, my uh, first serial chart. And then the final element I'd like to add is the detail element. So this will show information about features based on the layers pop-up configuration. So this is uh, an important thing to note that when you are preparing your map to be consumed within an app, configuring items like its pop-ups um, will affect how they're displayed within the app. So in this case, I have it here. And as we had configured the list earlier, when I zoom to the element, when I select the element in the list, it will zoom to that element in the map. But I'd like to further configure this so that when I zoom to that element in the map, the bar chart reacts as well as the detail element. So to do that, I'll go to the upper hand left corner, select configure, and here I can configure map actions. So this is for um, the map as a whole, but if I had more than one layer, I would be able to configure that for that specific layer. So here, my target will be the serial chart, as well as the detail. I'll press done, and so let's see this in action. Right now, I'll select the Queen Street Food Store. As you witnessed, the bar chart changed as well as the Queen Street Food Store. I'll do that again. And what this what will happen here is that it will show the elements, all of the elements within the map frame. So you can see if I go to the detail page, I can zoom through all three. I'll zoom into this spot and it will display just for Roco's All Fills Grocery Store. So there you have it. I've just managed to configure my first operations dashboard. I'll share this, I'll save this, sorry, and then in the next video I'll go over the various ways that you can share your dashboard.